Hi, my name is Margaret Curran. I've worked in Aboriginal education for over 30 years in the East Gippsland community. I'm going to give you some strategies or ideas to adopt when you're teaching Aboriginal students or if you have one or two Aboriginal students in your class. The first thing I'm going to tell you about is you've got to recognise that Aboriginal culture is a culture all of its own. Aboriginal people have their own identity and their culture is different to the white Australian culture. Aboriginal origins are hunter-gatherer, white Australian origins are agricultural. That means that their approach to child rearing differs according to the requirements of each group. In the hunter-gatherer society, children weren't expected to listen to instructions or obey. They learnt by observing and they were given a lot more freedom and independence. White Australian children are taught to obey, listen to verbal instruction and work communally as a group. So in our society, white, white Australian um, ways of um, rearing children is the majority group. Aboriginal ways is the minority and because it's the minority it's seen as the less desirable way to rear children and the way that white Australians rear the children is the correct way. Um, the implications this has for the classroom is that we expect the Aboriginal children to come to school knowing how to obey instructions, how to listen to verbal instructions and be part of a group that is raised in the white Australian way. Aboriginal children therefore come to school and they're bewildered by the way the teacher expects them to sit down and be quiet and listen. Um, they actually eventually realise that this is a different way and this is the way they're supposed to behave but they kind of start behind the, the eight ball. When you're communicating with Aboriginal kids in your classroom, just be aware that the verbal may not be as important as the observational. So just keep your verbal to a minimum. doesn't mean you don't do it. You can give instructions here and there, but just don't stress the importance of that so much as the doing. Aboriginal children especially like watching and doing rather than listening and then doing. Another thing about the language is a lot of Koori kids will come to school using Koori English. They'll talk to each other using Koori English. This is a legitimate language in itself, but you might not be familiar with it. So it might be an idea just to take a note of these um, little phrases that they use. Ask them, oh, what do you mean by that? And, and just um, sometimes use those phrases if it's appropriate and they might feel more comfortable with you. Another big thing with Aboriginal people and also with a lot of white Australians and people from other cultures is that they feel shame if they're singled out in the classroom. Direct questioning is a no-no really. So don't just pick on somebody. What do you think, Peter? Use indirect questioning where possible and people won't feel so shamed or embarrassed to speak up. Be aware that some of the Koori kids in your class might have hearing problems. Um, inner ear infections are rife in the Aboriginal community. And so they may not be hearing you. So make sure you look at them when you speak and make sure that they can understand what you're saying to them just by asking, are you okay about that or did you, did you hear what I said? If there tends to be a problem with somebody and nobody's noticed it, just let the teacher know or the career educator in your school. Some strategies you could use when you're um, setting up your classroom and um, writing your lesson plan is to use this space flexibly don't have your standard um, classroom set up. Have some little areas where people can choose to go and work in small groups or by themselves. 
you know, have corners with, say, some bean bags in it, a mat so they can sit on the floor, or little tables and chairs. This is um, young children or um, primary school children I'm talking about. But if you have adults in your class, do exactly the same. Let them choose where they want to work and who they want to work with. If it's a nice day, outside is great. A lot of our most successful lessons have been um, conducted outside. We have big um, learning circles where we would all sit in a circle on the grass, talk about things. Somebody might be demonstrating something, how to make something in the centre of the circle. One of the first things you've got to do when teaching Aboriginal students is to establish a good relationship with them. You've got to build trust and establish respect. The other thing you've got to do is believe in the student's ability to succeed. Have high expectations. If you're going to have low expectations, of course that's what you'll get back. So if you can believe that they're going to do the work and succeed at it, it'll be a lot better for you and for them. So have lots of independent self-managed tasks in your classroom. Um, also be flexible and spontaneous. If something's working, don't just stop it because you have to go on to the next bit of the lesson. Just let it keep going while it's being productive. Use lots of practical um, exercises in your class. Have lots of um, visual resources. Put them up around the room. Symbols, maps, charts, pictures. Another thing to be aware of is that extended family is really important in the Aboriginal community. People are related to a lot of people. There are aunts, uncles, cousins. Um, people are called auntie and uncle when they're not your first auntie and uncle or not even your auntie and uncle at all. You, you um, call people your cousin if it's your second, third or cousin once removed, he's still your cousin. So be aware of that when people in your class are talking about, oh, he's my cousin and I want to work with him or whatever, that they may be not as directly related as in the white community. Elders are respected in the Aboriginal community and it might be an idea, if you want something to really work, is to bring an elder into your classroom um, have them contribute or just have them sitting there doing a pra practical activity like, say, basket weaving or making weapons or something. It'll bring um, a stability and a respectfulness to the group. You'll find that sharing material things is something that happens quite a lot. Students may not have their own set of textures or their own um, books or their own paper. They'll bring to the classroom a, a kind of communal lot of materials or they'll just um, have a look and see who's got what and, and they'll share it around. You could find, particularly with the older or adult students, that they may do what we call voting with their feet. If they come to class and it's not for them, they just might not come back after the first break or after lunchtime and you won't know why. You'll have to rethink how you've presented the class. Quite often with Aboriginal people, when you ask them a question and you want a yes or no answer, they'll say yes when they really mean no. This is part of the, the shame thing or just not wanting to go there and giving you the answer they think you want but they'll go away and, and just do whatever they want to do. You expect your classroom to be a noisy place. If you've got a lot of Aboriginal people in the class they may want to have the radio going full bore. A lot of laughter happens in the classroom. Um, having a sense of humour is a really good thing to bring to the classroom with Aboriginal kids or, or older students. 
um, it just lightens up the mood makes it a much more relaxing place and you can have a lot of fun just be aware that transport may be an issue with your students getting to class can be hard because a lot of people in the community don't own cars or they share cars um, and so sometimes your students may have to walk quite a way to get to school and they might be coming in late. Um, sometimes your school or the TAFE college might have a bus so they can go around and pick the students up and get them to class on time. But um, don't give your students grief about coming to class late. If you want um, something to be really successful or you have a meeting planned or a special day planned and you would like to have as many people there as possible, it's always a good idea to put on a barbecue or provide a morning tea. If the um, community members know that there's going to be food supplied, they'll often turn up to something, particularly if it's like a parents meeting or um, a community liaison meeting. So it's always a good thing to have a bit of food around. Make sure you factor in a lot of breaks throughout your um, day, uh, particularly with the adult students. Some of them might smoke and they'll be needing a smoke break. Don't make it strict about having to stay in class. You might say, look, stay for this little bit until the end. Let them know when their um, break's going to be. Or you could just say, look, there'll be time coming up. Just listen to this. And then you can go out for a smoke and then they'll feel okay about it, knowing that they'll get to go out soon. Um, have lots of um, other breaks during the day as well. Um, and just let your students know that they're free to come and go as they want, so long as they're there for the important bits of the lesson. Sometimes you might find that the students don't turn up for a couple of days or even a couple of weeks. Um, what you've got to be aware of is what happens in the community usually affects um, a lot of people in the community. It could be um, a death, it could be community conflict, but there's usually some sort of other reason for people not coming to class, apart from just sleeping in and not being bothered to come. Um, you could find out what's going on in the community from your community liaison officer or from your Koori educator. Usually those people know these things. Just be aware that often, because the verbal's not so important, gestures are used a lot in the Aboriginal community. Um, little nuances like little eye movements or um, hand movements or um, pointing of the lips towards somewhere. Um, all of these ha have explicit meaning within certain families and certain communities. Um, you probably won't pick up on that for quite a while, but if you have Aboriginal students for a number of years in your classroom, you'll start to learn what diff the different gestures mean. You might think they're not actually communicating with each other, but they are. Body language is also um, part of that. Just, um, you know yourself, if you back off or stand with your arms crossed or whatever, it all means something. And the Koori community have their own um, specific body language for certain things. 